The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Today I'm at the Ontario Certified Crop Advisors Convention in London, catching up now with Alyssa Collins. She is a plant pathologist from Penn State University. Alyssa, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now today, um, you're talking about scouting and, uh, you know, from a perspective of, you know, uh, fungicides and disease and trying to make scouting an effective part of making your fungicide decisions and, you know, you started this conversation today about, you know, saying now this time winter January is a, is a new is a good time to recalibrate your scouting perspectives and your scouting. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so right now is great because we're in this dormancy period for humans and also for fungi and for our plants. So we get to start from zero and kind of look ahead to what our year is going to be and remind ourselves, well, what are my major issues in any given crop that I deal with? Um, and when are my periods that I really have to be active about scouting so that I can give myself the feedback I need to make good fungicide decisions down the road? Yeah. One of the, the conversations you had and the, the questions you should be asking yourself is, hey, when do I not need a fungicide, correct? Right, so there are lots of situations where fungicide is not helpful. You know, it, for instance, if you don't have a fungal disease, you're not gonna get any benefit from a fungicide. If you are dealing with a disease that might be fungal, but might not be affected by a fungicide, so a root rot, something like that, we can't get the fungicide down to the area where it would need to be effective. So certain situations, you just know off the bat, yeah, I should still scout for them, so I know how my season's shaping up, but this is not something I'm going to be monitoring so I can make that fungicide decision later. Yeah, and you know, obviously the conversation we had today was about winter wheat, and you really want to know when a fungicide can actually help as well. Yeah, so situations where you know there are effective fungicides on that disease issue, um, and that information is readily available and is updated every year. Um, there are situations where we know that the fungal disease causes us enough yield or quality loss that we really do get an economic benefit from a fungicide. And uh, a funny part of this conversation today was about the disease triangle. Um, you think every uh, farmer and every agronomist probably should have a tattoo. Uh, that's right. This is a really important tool. It basically summarizes everything we know about disease management uh, for plants. So we know that the amount of disease you get is directly related to how susceptible your crop is, how much pathogen you have. And then the really important part that is often overlooked is how conducive is the environment to that disease forming. And you had a lot of great tips throughout the day here. Um, uh, starting with, you know, just knowing your crop's life, knowing, you know, the stages, the life of winter wheat. Yeah, so knowing when that crop is vulnerable to any given disease, and it's different for different diseases. So, for instance, winter wheat makes a lot of its yield in its upper leaves and the head. And so anything that attacks that is going to have the potential to drive your yield down. Um, also, there are certain diseases where the pathogen can't really get into the plant except at certain times of year. Fusarium head blight is an example of something that can only get into the plant through the flowers. And so we know that protecting the plant outside of this time doesn't really help us. Also important to, to know your fungus and know your weather. That's right. So similarly, uh, when we know that Fusarium head blight, that fungus can only get in through the flowers, knowing the weather at the time that that plant is flowering is critical because if the weather is good for the fungus at that flowering time, you get more infection. So Alyssa, let's take a closer look at wheat. And one of the things that you sort of really focused on is, you know, you know, what do you, we need to protect? And you know, when it comes to, to winter wheat, the flag leaf. Yeah, so the flag leaf is the solar panel for this plant. It's what absorbs the sun's energy, turns those into sugars and drives them into your grain. Um, other really important parts are that grain head itself that also does photosynthesis and that second leaf down from the flag leaf. 
So knowing this, we can kind of target the things that we really want to protect on this plant. Are the lower leaves important? Yes, because if we see disease down there, we know it's more likely to move to the flag leaf. So early scouting is still important, but early scouting um, combined with more meaningful fungicide timing mm. is probably going to save you the most money. And that, that question of timing again, you, you, know, you, you pointed out three critical periods that we need to be out, out there and scout. Yeah, I would say a green up is the first time you want to be out there scouting for disease. Um, probably a little bit before that for other agronomic considerations, like how good is your stand, um, fertilizer, herbicide, things like that. But for disease, right at green up, because that's when we start to be able to detect things like powdery mildew um, and other leaf disease issues. Uh, then approaching boot is another really important time because that's when we start to see production of those really critical leaves for wheat. Um, so making sure we know what's coming for them if it's out there. And then finally, right around um, ripening is a great time to look as well so that we can look to the future. Not that ripening helps us make fungicide decisions in that season, but if you do see quality issues, if you're seeing smuts, bunts, um, if there's a lot of head scab, then that is something that you want to keep in mind if you're doing seed production um, or if you are saving seed to plant on your farm for cro cover crop or otherwise, that would be really important to know so you could possibly make a fungicide decision for seed treating the next crop. Yeah. You also mentioned uh, thresholds. So important to know those you know, when you're making application decisions. Yeah, so thresholds have kind of been developed over time through multiple studies, multiple places, and you can sometimes choose the one that makes sense for you. If you are scouting early and often, there's a set of thresholds that may work for you. If you're scouting right around the time that you're gonna be making that fungicide decision, there might be another set that work for you. Nothing is set in stone, but these are just good guidelines to help you make that call if it's a difficult decision that year. Right. Um, final question for you, and that is, you know, is there any one or two things that you think you know, growers and agronomists in the room here today could be doing better when it makes when making those fungicide choices and decisions? Yeah, you know, I think we're all doing the best we can. But the challenge, and, and I'm in charge of making cropping decisions too, is that so many issues stack up at once you have to prioritize, right? And when the weather is good for fungus, it's usually bad for being able to get across that field with a fungicide. And so that's the real challenge. So I don't think farmers are doing anything wrong. I just think that knowing this information ahead of time and giving it some thought really helps us prepare for when we do have to make those game time decisions. Um, great insights, Alyssa. Thank you for joining me on Real Agriculture. Thanks for having me.